we seek is the radiant light of a dream that shines in the eyes of a child and fuels the heart of a man. Welcome to the moment you promised yourself you'd reach. Put an end to a long climb. The Wolverines retake the lead. Take the next steps to the ultimate reality. Everything that kills me makes me feel alive. They have been guided by the light of dreams. The play to give them shape and come away a winner. On a flawless night in South Florida, the final football game of 2021, a tremendous matchup. The college football playoff semifinal at the Capital One Orange Bowl. It's something rare and special, the third ever meeting between the Michigan Wolverines, champions of the Big Ten, seated number two, and the Georgia Bulldogs, seated number three. This is the Ram Trucks kickoff. And Alabama awaits the winner here tonight. The Crimson Tide dispatching Cincinnati in Arlington. It's no surprise in semifinal number one. Will be a rematch with Georgia or a rare Alabama-Michigan game. We'll find out here in Hard Rock Stadium. And welcome, folks. Chris Fowler, Kirk Herb Street, Holly Rowe, Marty Smith will join us. We have been hyped about this matchup since the bracket came out about a month ago, Kirk. Semifinal number one, no surprise. The Tide got all the points they needed in their opening drive. Well, Al Alabama looked like Alabama. Very workmanlike. Not necessarily emotional. They're just kind of doing what they needed to do. Their defense was outstanding. They punched their ticket next Monday night. They get another shot for Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide to win a national championship. Who are they going to face, though? Jim Harbaugh and Michigan unranked in the preseason, the first ever playoff team that came from nowhere. Jim Harbaugh had his pay cut in half. He hired a bunch of younger coaches. He reinvigorated the program by turning the ownership of this team over to the leaders, guys like Aiden Hutchinson, the top pass rusher in Michigan history, the Heisman Trophy runner-up. And this core of leaders has led Michigan back. Look at the emotions for Hutchinson after they conquered Ohio State in the big house in the snow and then backed it up for a one-two punch handling the Hawkeyes in Indy. Let's look at the relief on Jim Harbaugh's face. Aiden Hutchinson has willed this team to a championship and an opportunity in this playoff, but he can't do it alone. Michigan's defense can keep him in this game, but if Michigan's going to win this game, their offense and a balanced attack will have to be on display the way it has for much of this year. Everybody talks about their running game, and it is, don't get me wrong, a big part. It's their identity. They love to run the power play, and they do it a lot of different ways. It starts with that double team, the pull around a guard, and often a tight end. We know that's their bread and butter, but tonight, they've got to use that to affect the eyes of the Georgia linebackers. Use that where they think they're going to run the ball, and they get the ball outside on the perimeter. Remember, Alabama attacked this Georgia secondary. Michigan has the weapons to try to do the same thing. Again, this is against Ohio State. Everybody's thinking run. Look at the defense flowing one way. You get them aggressive. You go back the other way with a reverse. Josh Gaddis is the play caller. Does a really good job of coming up with different wrinkles or, or creativity to add in to just that physicality of the run game. So yeah, they want to run the ball, but they do not want to play Georgia in a phone booth. They got to get out on the edges with the speed that they have at receiver. Yeah, Gaddis loves gadgets, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Nobody's been able to just beat Georgia with meat and potatoes offensive football. Remember how dominant this defense was all season long. Comparisons being made to the great defenses you've ever seen in the sport. 6.9 points allowed until that defensive meltdown against Alabama when Bryce Young carved him up for 421 passing yards. There's some doubt all of a sudden among Bulldog well, fans about this defense. Yeah, we were putting them on a pedestal with some of the greatest defenses of all time. And like you said, it was 12 games of perfection. And then they ran in to Bryce Young and Jamison Williams. Now the secondary, all year long, we wondered if somebody could attack the secondary, especially the safeties in coverage. And it took the final game. Bryce Young had all time, all kinds of time to throw. The receivers made plays against that, that the secondary, especially the double team with the safety that couldn't get back in coverage. And since that handshake, Kirby Smart has had 27 days to get his defense, led by N'Kobe Dean, one of the top linebackers in the country, ready. Tonight, it's about controlled 
chaos as they get ready to avenge that one loss and they got to get ready for this Michigan offense. There's no doubt there's some scar tissue on this Georgia team. It's evident but Dean told us rarely in this sport do you get second chances if you're losing a championship game. The dogs have one tonight. The Wolverines meanwhile playing their most significant football game in almost a quarter century since that championship. Yes in 97 and there is number 97 the end of that Big Ten title drought at 17 years. There's a swag for this group, Kirk. You can feel the vibe is, is very positive. As good a leadership and as strong of intangibles as any team that we've seen play in a long time, led by 97 and 12, Josh Ross on this defense. Hutchinson and the Wolverines checking this out. Their first CFP appearance. Very few on the Georgia side played a role in their last playoff run for the championship game. Taking it all in. What a journey. Nobody outside of that team gave them a chance to be here. Including their own fans. They believe. 100 to 1 shots preseason. But Jim Harbaugh and the Wolverines charge out. Filled with confidence as 7-point underdogs. The dogs will enter shortly. We're back at just 60 seconds. You're watching the Ram trucks kick off. And the Bulldogs take the field for Kirby Smart, his sixth playoff game as a coach, assistant or head coach. Crowd pretty evenly split here tonight. Maybe, maybe a slight edge for Georgia, but it's hard to tell. It is hard to tell. <laughs> Let's take a look at how the SEC and Big Ten have fared in these playoff games. Actually, it's Big Ten against Alabama. Ohio State splitting the two games against the Tide, losing the championship game, and Alabama overwhelming Michigan State five years ago in the semifinal. How will Georgia respond? Big Jordan Davis, leader of that defense, and Nicobe Dean, the Butkus Award winner, the do-everything linebacker. No one's certain how they'll respond. That's Kirby Smart hopes. That's the that's fire. What, that's what make this makes this so exciting. You know, we nobody finished any any hotter and with more momentum than Michigan the last couple weeks and nobody ended the season more frustration than Georgia 27 days later they collide at the Orange Bowl it's a big 12 crew officiating tonight Scott Campbell is the referee let's go to him on the field for the coin toss Gentlemen, congratulations on reaching the college football playoff semifinal game. This is the Capital One Orange Bowl. I'm Scott Campbell, the referee. Robert Richardson will be tonight's umpire. The president of the Orange Bowl committee, Mr. Jack Seiler, will be presenting the Orange Bowl coin for tonight's toss. Mr. Seiler. The Capital One Orange Bowl shield is heads the college football playoff logo is tails georgia you're the visiting team you get the honor to call the toss tails is the call i'm going to flip it and let it hit the tails is the call it is heads michigan you've won defer michigan has won the toss will defer you're getting the football which direction do you want to kick put your back to that goal line georgia over here Georgia will receive at this end. Shake hands, guys. Let's have a great playoff game. Let's hear from Kirby Smart now down to Holly Rowe. Well, Coach, you're getting the football with the, the pressure and the edge rushers that they have on this defensive line. What do you do early on offense to make sure you can contain them? You got to change it up. You got to pitch to them a little bit, not do the same things over and over. They got good edge rushers, and we got some guys that we, we expect to block. Thank you so much. Marty, let's check in with you. Thank you, Holly. Coach, we made it. What was your final message to your team tonight before you took the field? I told them they've been preparing for this since last February. They believe in each other. Their resolve is strong. It's hard. This is the next step. 
Go let it rip. Time to go. Thank you, Coach. Enjoy it. Chris. That's a piece of history. He's never done a pre-kickoff interview before. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. First time he's done that. And you get a little feel of the energy, what he's bringing to the table tonight, sharing with his team. Harbaugh says he attacks each day with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. <laughs> and it's reflected in this group. Trust in the defense, Kirk. They win the toss, so they'll put Stetson Bennett, Zamir White, and that offense with Brock Bowers, the All-American freshman tight end, their main pass-catching weapon. They'll get the football first. Opportunity to try to allow Todd, Todd Munkin, the offensive coordinator from Georgia, to get Samir White. And this offense led by Stetson Bennett just kind of get him into a flow. Remember, things did not go well. They got behind against Alabama, got into a predictable play-calling situation. Tonight, they want to run the ball, and they want to have play action. So Todd Munkin, who calls the plays, he and Kirby Smart fiercely defending Stetson Bennett, who threw for a lot of yards, but made a lot of mistakes in that loss to Alabama. 40 degrees and cloudy in Ann Arbor, 35 degrees warmer here in South Florida. Here we go, the anticipated collision between the Wolverines and the Bulldogs with the Crimson Tide awaiting the winner, Jake Moody. Excellent kicker typically allows no returns. Kenny McIntosh is deep for the dogs just in case. It's a high kick. And that's McIntosh stepping up at the six.